The Bible says, and these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So this group of people are saved because they've received the word of God. They believe on it. They get saved. They receive it with gladness. They're happy about it. But, verse 17, it says, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So they get saved, but they don't really get rooted down. They don't, they don't get fully just established and firm in the word of God. You know, they don't get plugged into a good church. They, they get saved. But, you know, after a little while, something offends them, something comes up, and they just kind of fall by the wayside and don't end up really doing anything with their life. The next group here, look at verse number 18, and this is who I'm going to focus on tonight. It says, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some hundred. So that last group is people, they hear the word, they receive it, they get saved, they get grounded, they get fired up, and they become fruitful, and they start bringing forth other believers, they preach the gospel, they get other people saved, they lead other people to Christ, they're bringing forth fruit. But the group right before that, I believe they're saved also, just like the ones that fell on stony ground. But these ones last a little bit longer. So the ones on the stony ground, they receive the word, but then the first thing kind of comes up that offends them, they're just, they're just out, they can't handle it. This next group, they start growing a little bit more but then they get distracted with the cares of this world. They start, they start being more focused on money, more focused on riches, more concerned about whatever lust of the flesh that's enticing unto them. And it says here at the end of verse 19, they becometh unfruitful. So when they're becoming unfruitful, I take that as they, they were fruitful. They got started out, they were growing, and they actually started producing fruit. But then, because they got distracted, because they started focusing more on their job, more on their money, more on fill in the blank, anything other than serving the Lord, it's just that became the priority in their life, and they stopped winning souls. They became unfruitful, and after a while, I guarantee you, these people then end up just falling out of church and just doing nothing with the rest of their life. Now, sin has a way of getting people out of church. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. And look, notice it says deceitfulness because all, all of the things that you can do where the world's going to try to promote, um, you know, making a lot of money, it's all deceitful. It's all vain. It's empty. It's meaningless. When people are trying to prop up all, you know, no, 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 don't spend so much time going to church. You know, don't waste your time with that. You need to be spending all your time, you know, going out and, and working 80 hours a week and just making a whole bunch of money and just do that. And then you could have, you know, a boat and then you could have two houses and then you could have all these cars and then you could have all this stuff. And they try to, to put these, you know, shiny new things in front of your eyes to distract you into thinking that, Hey, yeah, that want, I want that. And you know, you know what that is? Covetousness. And beware of that, because that is, that is a very dangerous sin to get wrapped up in. When you start looking at things and wanting to have those things, that's covetousness. And the Bible says that's a sin. And that, that will distract you from where, our, our, where we should be focused and that we should be focused on the rewards that are in heaven. But also the mind, not the earthly things. And that we're supposed to be, you know, considering and thinking about our reward in heaven because where our heart is, uh, or where our, where our treasure is, there is our heart, there our heart will be also. And if you are racking up a treasure in heaven because you're serving the Lord, you're bringing forth fruit, you're getting people saved, then you're going to be focused more on your rewards in heaven than what you can get on this earth. Because everything on this earth is just going to be burned up anyways. What good is it going to do? 